You may think this is something from a James Bond movie, but researchers at Southampton University say driverless cars are becoming a very real possibility. The UK has just launched a four-year research programme. And what we plan to do over those four years is go through all the aspects of design and testing to, des to provide people with automotive vehicles. So we'll start off in the first year, we're going to be doing designing and modelling work, that's on the desktop. The second year we'll be in the simulator trying out those designs with real drivers. In the third year we'll be moving on to the test track and trying out further iterations of those designs. And in the final year we'll be on real, real roads, driving around with um, cars and, and people tr in the final set of iterations of design. The university simulator tests drivers of different ages, genders and capabilities. So how does it work? So um, now we're in the automated vehicle, you're experiencing what it would be like if the car was fully automated. So that means you don't have to touch the steering wheel, you don't have to touch the pedals, the car will be driving itself. And on the display that's in the centre there, between the rev counter and the speedo, you'll see a little display with your car. And that shows you what the, vi the vehicle is picking up. So if there's any other vehicles in its vicinity, then it will show vehicles approaching from behind or vehicles that are in front of you. And you know that vehicle has been captured um, by the automation. If vehicles appear that are not represented in there, you can be sure the vehicle hasn't detected them. Okay. And that might be a cue for you then to take control because the vehicle is unaware of those, of, of those cars. Do you have a, a range of different driving environments? Yes, yeah, so we, um, we can simulate motorways, dual carriageways, um, extra urban, rural and urban situations. We can basically imagine anything in this simulator. Okay. So you can just sit back and relax really? Yes. To car, some extent. The car will take you there but um, at the moment you're still required to supervise the car. Southampton is investigating how to switch control from manual to automated and vice versa. When you've automated all the driving, the driver's mind will invariably wonder. They won't be, um, it'll be difficult to maintain a, attention to the driving task for 20, 30, 40 minutes on a long motorway drive. So drivers will be distracted. They will start reading. I imagine, you know, you could imagine they'd be texting, uh, taking calls, reading books, doing their email, all sorts of other tasks apart from driving. So we know it takes time to bring the driver back in. And that's the problem we're really working on. So when these systems are autonomous and they can cope, everything's fine, it might be okay for the driver to be engaged in other tasks. But when the drive, they need to call the driver back, the question is how do we do that? How do we do that interface between the driver and the automated systems? If you want to take manual control, then you just um, grab hold of the steering wheel and start pressing on the pedals. Shall I try that? If you want to. Ooh. Okay, you're back in control. There we go. And there's a... Oh no, there's an oncoming one. vehicle. Yeah. So we're about to collide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should Thank have pulled you. off. Alexander is developing audio and visual cues to help drivers in automated cars. The car might ask you, it is time to take your exit. Uh, could you resume control in, say, seven or ten seconds and it will support you during that transition and we're looking at how can we facilitate that those seven seconds what information does the driver need to do that successfully without feeling discomfort but could driverless cars take the fun out of driving perhaps not if you have long boring journeys on motorways I think it's, it's quite an alien concept at first when you get into a vehicle with highly automated functions. And I mean, the steering wheel will move, the pedals might move, and it will feel like someone else is driving the vehicle. But I also think people might become accustomed to it fairly quickly or adopt the concepts. And it will definitely increase the comfort of, of driving and hopefully safety as well. £11 million have been earmarked for the project. Researchers say British universities 
and the British car industry are in a world-leading position. The question is, when will automated vehicles be rolled out? That's the question everybody's asking, of course. Um, when I began this research in 92, they said there would be 20 years. Well, 20 years has come and gone. They're still not quite here yet, but a lot of the technologies, the building blocks that have allowed this to happen, are in place. Um, I might estimate um, five to ten years, that sort of time frame, I think we'll begin to see these cars enter the road. They undoubtedly will be in premium cars to start with, you know, the high-level cars, but eventually that will filter down to other cars. Dale McEwen, that's Solent.